Hello, my friends. So today what we're going to be talking about is upholstery foam. So I'm going to start this video off by saying there will be no links to Amazon where you could buy my foam uh, because I don't buy it from Amazon. I don't have any affiliated links, anything like that. So uh, I really get it from my upholstery supplier. OK, so anyway, now that I have that behind me, so this is going to be a fairly quick video, so stick with me to the end. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you the differences between upholstery foam. So I have several examples here, and I'm just going to go through each one of them. So one thing I know a lot of people do this wrong. Maybe you're one of them. You're going to recognize yourself here in a second. But a lot of people, when they measure density on a foam, so usually there's a low density, which is soft, medium density, which is what I use for just about everything. And then there's going to be a high density foam, which I call like sitting on a brick. Okay, so this here is going to be a medium density foam right here. And it came out of some couch cushion at some point. It's about four inches thick. You can ask people. Okay, so fill the density of the foam. So what they're going to do is they're going to grab it like this with their hand, like they're grabbing something like this, right? You know what I'm talking about? So they're grabbing it like this. So this four inch foam crushes down to just about nothing when you do that. Okay, this is how you measure density of foam. You hold it like this and you do praying hands just like that. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your praying hands and you're going to push together this way. You see that? That's how you measure density foam. Foam density. Vice versa. So what are you going to tell all your friends and share your new knowledge? Foam density testing? Okay, take this super high density foam right here as an example. What are you going to do? You're going to squeeze it like that? Okay. Or are you going to use praying hands like this? Look at that. I, I, um, I can't even get it to collapse at all. That's what I'm talking about. The super high density. And this is what low density looks like. Okay, do the old... Squeeze test like this, it crushes down to just about nothing. You do the praying hands, and you can see how soft that one is. This is low density. So now let's move on to scrim. Okay, scrim is the, the foam that you use to sew uh, either fabric or vinyl onto. Okay, what it has is it has a fabric backing. Okay, so this one here is what I consider a low quality, and you can recognize it right away because it's pink. Okay, take a look at the backing on this right here. You can see how the back separates from the foam. And it's like a nylon mesh. And they actually have one that's a lot worse than this. It, it looks like a, a netting uh, that has like eighth inch holes in it or something. Like an eighth inch uh, weave. So anyway, this is why I don't like to use this stuff because it's not the best that you can use. You know, it's cheaper and a lot of people, they use that because it is cheaper. And um, mm, don't do that to your customers. So now let's talk about a better quality scrim. This one happens to be quarter inch and it has the fabric backing, resembles headliner material. So this one here is going to be a tough stuff. I can't barely, I mean, if I just get the edge of it, I could kind of peel it away, the backing. But this is a much better quality here. It's got a heavier backing. It holds the thread on the back much better. You know, the, the fabric keeps the thread from cutting through the foam. and also helps, helps you feed the material through your sewing machine. Uh, if it was just raw foam like this and you're trying to sew raw foam through your sewing machine, it's going to create a lot of friction and it's going to drag on you. So that's another real nice reason for getting the scrim. So now the best quality scrim. This is what I'd really recommend. It's got a nice heavy backing on there. Yeah. Okay, it's got a nice, um, nice higher density foam. So this is really nice if you're sewing pleats. Because if you're sewing pleats with this stuff here, you're gonna end up with a nice deep pleat with a lot of definition. Technique number 52, because um, people are also complaining in the comments, where's your techniques? 
Uh, we missing the techniques, okay? So usually techniques are when I'm actually performing work or making something, trying to uh, find and, or to try to show easier ways of doing things or the way I do things, new techniques. So anyway, let's call this the technique. Okay, using a, a, an excellent grade and quality of foam, scrim foam on your next project. Now let's talk about uh, kind of the opposite of upholstery foam. This is closed cell foam right here. This happens to be quarter inch Landau top foam. You see that right there? So anyway, the Landau top foam, we used to use this stuff a lot in the 1970s and the 1980s because we were doing vinyl tops all the time. Maybe some of you guys don't even know what this is, you know, because that was before your time. Uh, but anyway, land out top, sometimes you got to do a vinyl top. You know, there's going to be a 70s or 1980s car comes around that needs a vinyl top. So this is the foam that goes underneath that. So this is closed cell foam. Closed cell foam does not absorb water. Okay, it's really waterproof. And it's tough stuff. It's really tough. It's really hard to rip that stuff. You can't. It's like bulletproof. Okay, so that's land out top foam. I think some of you might recognize this right away. This is Dacron pad. Te while technically not foam, it's sometimes used uh, in conjunction with foam uh, when it comes to like furniture or other uh, cushions. Uh, what this does, it's really handy for like if you have a motorcycle seat where the foam has been uh, damaged and it's uneven, you can just put a, a layer of this Dacron pad over the top of that and it smooths everything out really nice. Um, so that's another technique, that's technique number 62, is uh, smoothing something out with Dacron pad. So the Dacron pad, um, you can see here, um, I, I actually do use this a lot, like in um, couch cushions, um, RV cushions, that kind of thing. So that's something else to consider while you're working. So anyway, like I was saying, ah! 